Psalm 17, a prayer of David. It was recorded. It's put in the Bible by the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Quite possibly our prayers are being recorded and kept in our book that will be open. Here to write, O oh Lord, again, we get in circumstances when we in life, we forget on how holy God is. We get desire situations and we think God to be a human. And he's not. And we think sometimes in our prayer life, God, you're not listening. The mighty great David thought so. And when we read the partial life of David that we have, we don't have the complete life of David. And it does look like sometimes, God, you're not answering David. Why didn't you just kill Saul, Saul King Saul, early? God has his time. And I always wondered, why didn't Jesus come in Genesis chapter 4? Right after man sinned. Why was it so many years? And I don't have those answers. But God is holy and God's right. And I'm a human. David's a human. And it's not to be thinking of as a sin or that, you know, God, you're not listening to me. A great man like David had those thoughts. And then the other possibility, you know, here's a here's a prayer, Lord. It's serious. I need your all your attention right now, God. Stop tending the funeral for the sparrow. Stop feeding the whales in the ocean, making the stars shine like you do. You do every single day. I need all your attention. And there's only one time we read in the Bible right now from when time began, when Lucifer fell to we get to the tribulation period in heaven. I believe there's no singing. There's no rejoicing. Lucifer left. He was a song leader. And I got scriptures showing it, and I'm really not sure. But but it's recorded in the Bible that the only time that we really hear angels rejoice is when the lost man gets saved. So on that aspect, there are in heaven paying attention to us in some way, some form, in some ideal. And not only does God hear the right, but God hears the wrong. Proverbs will tell us that the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. Attend unto my cry. Like no one else is crying to the Lord right now. I'm important. I got trouble. Give ear unto my prayer. So this, this is a prayer. That goes not out of feigned, lying, pretending lips. I'm not lying to you. And there are prayers out there that lie to God. That man that got down, he says, Oh, I'm glad I'm not as this heathen over here. And I, blah, 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 blah. I look how great I am. That's a lying prayer. Because we're all sinners. I'll tell you another lying prayer. It happens in Hollywood and it happens in churches. You get on the screen, whether a movie or television show, and you get a fan, and they're praying to God because it's in a script. That's a lying prayer. You got a man, he, he's in a battlefield movie fighting some war. Oh God, you know, you get me out and help me all this. And God ain't paying attention. That's a script. That's a lie. And then you'll get plays and pageants and skits in the church and all the little kiddies got to say. And then yet we go mock the Catholics for having prayer bees. We mock the Catholic the Catholics for having a prayer paper. We mock the people that have prayer wheels and stuff like that. And it happens in the Baptist church. Be honest with God. I've always, if you are praying to God and you are angry with God, what, are you going to hide it from him? Oh, God, he knows. He's not going to strike you down with, I mean, if you're a born-again, Bible-believing Christian and, and you are saved and you are a child of God and you got something odd against God, tell him. 
honesty is not not the, the best policy. And you're not going to pretend before God. He already knows. He wants to hear from us. Paul said, God, I got this thorn in the flesh. I sought the Lord three times. Let my sentence. That's kind of funny, that word sentence, because that's used in the court. He's going to be sentenced. Because this is much more than a sentence. This runs 15 verses. If it was 15 verses in a sentence, uh, my English teacher, one, one of my uh, grades, he used to get so mad, I run on sentences. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence. He's saying, God, I got this prayer and I want you to hear me. I want it to come before you. We have that as a Christian today in the church day. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. I'm not in heaven. The Bible says I'm already seated in heavenly places. My prayer life reaches God because it goes through the Holy Spirit and then it goes through Jesus Christ, which makes prayers and groanings that I can't groan before God. That's the Christian. David doesn't have that promise that we have. Let the eyes behold the things that are equal. Hear the right, Lord, then equal. David's praying, say, Lord God, if there's any part of my prayer that's wrong, you got to balance it out. I don't know what to pray. I don't know how to pray. No, I don't. Thou has proved my heart. God tries us. God shows us where we stand. God has proved me to say, you know what? I need help in this area. I need help in this area. I'm a sinner in this area, and I'm battling this sin. God saying, hey, I'm letting this happen in your life because I want to show you who you are. Thou has visited me in the night. Now look at chapter 16 we did the other night. Verse 7. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My rains also instruct me in the night season. There it is. Rain is the Lord guiding you. There was something about an incomplete Bible. No 66 books. That God did speak to them and, and spoke to Joseph and Pharaoh in a dream because there are no 66 completed books of the Bible. Mark says 16 said they went out with signs and warriors. They can drink poison. Nothing happened to them. Serpents can buy them. Nothing happened. Because that was to prove the word. And once we have the 66 completed books of the Bible that God wanted and nothing else. All right, I'm done with all, the, all that. Because you've got it written, you can open. We hold in our hands, in our laps, what Jesus didn't hold when he walked this planet. And when Paul went out missionary all over Europe, he did not have what we have because he's still writing it or people are writing it for him. Thou hast tried me. You shall find nothing. I wouldn't be so bold to, to say that, David. The Lord's tried me in the last in the last few months, and I go to a King James Bible believing church, and the preacher gets up and preach, and I still find myself at fault. And I find myself in that seat, confessing my sins and saying, "God, I need to get right." I could not make a boat. Thou shalt find nothing. Oh. Ugh. I can't say that. Maybe when my body's dead, but my body ain't going to talk. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. So it sounds like to me that David could keep a guard on his tongue. And yet James says, you can't. You can train a monkey to do something in a circus. You can train a elephant to work a construction area in, in another country. You can train birds to talk. But he says, no man can tame that tongue. David couldn't even tame his eyes when he went for a walk. 
Now, don't go, oh, David, no, 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 no. We do the same thing to God. We try to lift ourselves up to God like we're somebody important. But again, I couldn't say that. My mouth transgressed. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer, Apollyon. The same one that went through Egypt on the night of the, of the Passover, and God says, okay, go into that house. Apollyon goes in and kills the firstborn. Apollyon, no, you know, stop. You can't go to that door. Why? I want to get him. Blood. Not this one. And you find Apollyon, you find him in the book of, of Revelation with the tribulation period. So here we come. We're, we're, we're running to the tribulation period. You know, I thank God that God has saved my soul, that I am. Some say that the church is going to the tribulation period. We're not. But I'm thank God because you know what? I could not survive the tribulation period. I could not survive the law. I am a sinner. Saved by grace. And if I don't actively do a sin, I think terribly. And thinking is just as much of a sin as actually doing. So that's destroyed. That's Apollyon. I forget what the other name is in Greek and Hebrew name. Hold up my goings in thy path. That my footsteps slip not. So David's saying, Lord God, I don't want to slip. I don't want to fail. I want to be on the solid ground. I don't want to be in the sinking sand. I have called upon thee. Definitely 100% true of David. For thou shalt, thou wilt hear me. See, David's got the truth. David's got the thing. God, you hear me. But man, this time of trouble, God, it looks like you ain't at that same thing for us. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know that God hears. Oh, Lord God, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Lack of faith. Lack, lack of trust. Oh, God, incline thy ear unto me and hear my speech. I have called on, upon thee. Thou wilt hear me. Incline thy ear unto me and hear my speech. I thought you just said he'll hear you. This is not a rehearsed prayer of David that's written down. David says what well, in, in the same verse, which is no, you know, David didn't say, okay, Lord, chapter 17, verse 6. Okay. <laughs> David didn't do that. The chapter verse markings, though I believe are inspired to a point, came long after the Bible was printed. But David is not in a prayer book. David's like, Lord God, I know you can hear me, but Lord God, will you listen to me? That's man, that's human, that's a man who's in trouble. That's a man who's got faith in God and he's living in a world of trouble. Show thy marvelous loving kindness. And that's God. O thou that sayest by thy right hand, that right hand is Jesus. By thy, what? Saveth by thy right hand. What saves man? Jesus Christ. Though Jesus Christ has not been born, Jesus Christ has, has not lived the 33 and a half years, Jesus Christ has not suffered and died, not been buried, has not rose from the grave, but Jesus will say, David will die and go into Abraham's bosom and he will be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so, it will be still Jesus that will, that will save his soul and redeem his soul, but not at this point in time. When the fullness of time came, God was born of a woman. Save it by thy right. I believe every time you read the right hand of God, not the right hand of man, but when, when you're talking about the right hand of God, I believe that's Jesus Christ, past, present, and future. It says in, in Acts that he is seated at the right hand. So at the right hand of God, okay, God, look to the right. Who's there? Your son. Jesus, listen. There in the Bible right now, in the book of Psalms, the Old Testament, it's not like Jesus is not there. Oh, he don't show up to his born. That's not the case. Jesus is Jesus is the creator. Jesus was there before time was. Jesus has always been. He's the Alpha and the Omega. At the right hand of God, Jesus is still there. 
The only time that Jesus is not at the right hand of the Father is for the 33 and a half years he was on this planet. You believe that? I just said that. Right hand that them which put trust in thee who those that rise up against them. So the right hand that saves is the one that puts their trust in God. Keep me as the apple of thy eye. And that shows up in Deuteronomy 32.10, Proverbs 7.2, Lamentations 2.18, Zechariah 2.8. And that's where this expression comes from. And many of your expressions used out in the world today are found in the Bible. You're the apple of my eye. There's one of the places there. It's described as the law of God, the word of God, and it's also described about Israel. I'd be careful of you how you use the expression apple of the eye because I said it's the word of God and it's Israel. If you say, oh, sweetheart, you're the apple of my eye, you may be taking what God has said about Israel and putting it upon somebody else. I would not use that expression unless you're talking about Israel or the word of God as I gave you the scripture. I mean, the Catholic Church and, and the Congregational Church, they steal the promises from the World Church of God. They steal the promises of, of Israel, and they applied it to themselves. So is the expression, the apple of my eye. That's reserved for the, for the Word, and that's reserved for Israel. Be careful how to use it. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. That's a, that's a chicken. That's birds. When there's trouble, there's a fox or somebody like that, the birds will grab it. Grab their young and put it under the, under her under her feathers. And Jesus said, you know, as, as same case, if Israel would just come under me like a chicken in her broad, but they won't. David will. For the wicked, there's the wicked. Now David's talking about his enemy, but in the tribulation period, the wicked, the wicked. That's the antichrist that oppresses me. David, uh, I'm going to misquote the verse, but for the Old Testament, all they that will live godly in Jehovah shall suffer persecution. There's no Jesus yet. That's right for any testament, any dispensation. If you're going to live for God, you're going to suffer. And it had happened to suffer him all the way back to Cain and Abel. Abel brought the good offering. God says, oh, I love that. I accept that. Cain's like, where's about mine? No. He had a little talk with his brother in the field and he rose up and killed his brother. People who live godly and do right have been suffering since Abel. So don't think if you're going to get saved that everything's going to be hunky dory. It's going to get worse. Because the Bible says for today, this church age, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Salvation ain't going to solve your worldly living on this earth problems because if you read the gospels and the life of jesus christ and the hardship he got you think you're gonna live life wonderfully and fruitfully and, and whipped cream with a cherry on top when jesus didn't get it and when jesus told the people around him he said listen take up your cross that was the ultimate torture in the time of jesus to be crucified it was no happy thing. I mean, okay, honey dears, I'll see you guys in a while. I'm going to go get crucified today. By the no, it wasn't like that. I would assume that anybody who was put to the thing, like the two thieves and Jesus, this would be their afternoon, the crucifixion. I would assume some would try, and some probably ran away and got out from it. Probably never found or were caught. From my deadly enemy who comforts me about. They want death. They want murder. You know, that is a picture of Jesus. Jesus healed people on the Sabbath, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees wanted him dead. They are enclosed in they are enclosed in their fat. I mean, are they huge? Do they need a diet? No. That's prosperity. That's They have a lot of money. They have a lot of goods. 
around Thanksgiving, the turkey, he gets all his gifts. He gets all the wonders of food. And he is just so happy before Thanksgiving. And then off goes his neck. Chickens are a chickenry or whatever you call where they are. And they're grown for food, for, you know, fried chicken. They're grown for, you know, to be put on the market. They get all the good food. And they're like, oh, hey, hey. Then they get whacked. They're not fat. In, well, they're probably fat, too. Could be. And they're just fat with goods, the worldly goods. With their mouth, they speak proudly. Yeah, true. Look what I got. Look at me. Look how good I am. They have now compassed us in our step. Us. Us. Well, David's not alone. We're walking, and they're in our way. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. They're bowing down to their God. They're bowing down like, you know, look at, we look so bad. Woe is me. We haven't killed anybody. Like as a lion, there's the devil. Our adversary, the devil, is thinking about who he may devour. That is greedy of his prey. And as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. Now here's a lion, he's got food, he won't share it. Here's a lion, he's lurking, he's looking for food. That's the devil that Peter describes. Arise, second advent. That antichrist is going to be greedy. You're a Jew, I want you, I want you only for myself. That's the dragon that wanted that Jewish child. He's going to send out ambassadors. He's going to send out workmen all through the world in the tribulation period. You find them Jews and you bring them to me. Reward. Dead. Jews. Antichrist. Arise, second advent, O Lord. Disappoint him. Not them. Him. Who? The lion. Who's the lion? The wicked. Who's the wicked? The Antichrist. And cast him. Down. Down where? He's going to be locked up for a thousand years. He's going to be cast off in a lake of fire that, that burns forever. Deliver my soul from the wicked. That's what the Jews will be crying out. Which is thy sword? What's thy sword? When Jesus Christ comes back, Revelation 19, that sword that comes out of his mouth. Don't tell me I'm crazy. Scripture with scripture. Now, if you've got a modern Bible, you can't match those scriptures. You find a lot of a lot of tribulation, a lot of second advent, a lot of millennium in the in the song. Because they're gonna be singing the millennium. I guarantee they're not gonna open up a hymn book. Open your hymn book to 587. I think they're gonna say open the Psalms chapter, let's sing chapter eight today or whatever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. It does Jesus did not say that about a hymnal. I'm just saying what Jesus said. Some people uphold a hymnal like it's the word of God. No, many of the hymns are wrong. Many of the good hymns don't even have the name of Jesus in them. If heaven and earth are going to pass away and Psalms is a hymnal of your Bible, if we're going to sing any hymns, listen, all right, it says that they sung the song of Moses. Well, that's back there in Exodus. They're going to say it is another song that no one knew but them themselves. I forget which one that one is. Probably in the Bible. From men which are thy hand, O Lord. From men of the world, that's not good. Which have their portion in this life. They're living. Whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. Jesus said, God makes the rain on the, rain to, on the just and the unjust. They are full of children. They have a lot of offspring. You know, since the day I've been saved, and I, I, their name came up today in my prayer, my prayer list, and I've known a lot of families who are married. They go to church, they love the Lord, and just have such 
difficulty of having children. When the family I think about today, I just want to even today I was praying for. I want they multiple miscarriages after miscarriages, just from the time I knew them. And I'm just wondering today, do they have a child, or is she, or still going through those troubles? I don't know. They may may have gone off to glory, or they they may have broke. I don't know, but it seems like Christians who want to have children do right, they're the ones that struggle. My wife and I. I was fit for child rearing or whatever you want to call it. My wife had to be helped to have our children. And we loved the Lord and did right. Something about that. And leave the rest of their sustenance to their babe. Inheritance. They love their children and say, when I die, this is my will. I leave this portion to this child. I leave this portion to that child. That child doesn't get anything. This child gets this. My wife gets that. My neighbor gets his lawnmower back. And, you know? You got something of value. My will's got, you know, I got two Bibles. I got two Schofield Bibles, and I got them willed out to the children. That's my most precious thing. And if I got money, there's a percentage. I have to change my world now, but um, there's a percentage. I mean, if I have a dollar left in my name, that's more than no dollar. As for me, now David just compared the worldly man, verse 14. You know, you know what they do, Father? They just take care of their children. They make more children. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. David, like Job, said, I'm going to see God one day. How's that? He's going to see God in Jesus Christ. I shall be satisfied. You know, the, those worldly people, they're going to get an inheritance. Oh, but what I'm going to get, I'm going to see God's face and I'll be satisfied with that. When I awake. That's not David. David's not sleeping saying his prayer. David says, when I, David says, when I'm resurrected. Now look at this next phrase. With thy likeness. Paul comes to assume that for what I, I believe is, and maybe it's wrong, but I, there's a teaching out there that we're all going to look like Christ one day. And, and the person I've taught, been taught, 33 or 30 or 33 year old males, even the females, one day will be all males. And we're going to look like Jesus Christ, except for the one thing is we're not going to have the mark. Now, you don't believe that? That's perfectly fine. That's not going to, not doctor is going to send you to hell if you don't believe it, but I do believe in it. David said, Thy likeness. What's thy likeness? Holiness, righteousness. And then maybe they will look like Christ too. I mean, after all, Jesus Christ was Jewish. And David's Jewish. You know, it's so bad that with the world, you ever you ever think about, all right, let's just look at the, the pure facts for a moment here. Let's forget prejudice. The people of Egypt were black people. The people of Israel were brown people. How come Jacob, uh, Joseph's brothers did not recognize that Joseph was not a true Egyptian. Now, I may not have recognized him, but the fact is, it's been many, many, many years, but Joseph would not have been the same color as the Egyptians. When we get to glory, if this is the case, we're, gonna, we're not going to have black, white, and yellow, brown skin in heaven. We're not, that's not going to be that nonsense anymore. And if the Bible says, Paul says, Hebrew is the, is the language of heaven. And I would assume that there is, if there is a color bearing in heaven, I would not say it would be white. People say there is a white Jesus. That's absolutely 100% wrong. I have seen colors in pictures and, and stained glass windows of 
black Jesus and black disciples. That's 100 completely percent wrong. Adam, which is a son of God, Luke chapter 3, Adam means red brown. If I were a gambling man, I would put my odds on when we get to glory, we're going to be red brown. Where'd you get off on that? It says, when I awake, when I am resurrected with thy, like, I'm going to look just like you, God. It'll be like it says, God's spirit, no man can, has, has seen a you know, spirit. Yeah, but Jesus said, hey, when you, when you see me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. And Jesus walked around as a brown hue of a color of the children of Israel. Brown. He wasn't colored, he wasn't a chocolate bunny, and he wasn't white, and he wasn't a white bunny. He was brown. He was of Shem. Somehow, in that ark, there was a white man, there was a colored man, and there was a brown man. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how it was. I, I believe that. Because Japheth went to Europe, and he's the white man. Ham went down to Africa, He's the colored man. Shem went east, west. No, Shem went east. He's the oriental man. He is the brown man, the yellow man. Now, you think it's prejudice and all that? When we all get the glory, we'll all know if I'm wrong or if you're wrong. But David said, like Paul said, we will be in his like. 